What's up guys? So coming up is part two of our Neural Networking for Dummies where we're going to be talking about activation functions. Stay tuned. Alright, hello everybody and welcome to Neural Networks for Dummies part two, activation functions. Now if you haven't already seen part one, make sure you go check that out. I'll put a link in the video description. Um, but again, these, these this is a series of videos that are going to build on each other and really peel back neural networks layer by layer. Uh, so make sure you watch every video in the series. All right, so without further ado, let's jump right in. So I'm going to go ahead and put some data up on the screen here. Now, if you remember part one in the video series, this data set should look familiar. Uh, so we'll just continue with that. Now let's add some labels here for context. We'll call our input sales last year. We'll call our output sales this year. And each row will represent a single year. Now, I'm going to start out with a little bit of review here. So if you remember in part one of the series, um, really we kept it, I kept it simple. All we did was take our input, multiply by our weight, and that gave us our output. And in this example, our input was 2, our weight was 2, 2 times 2 is 4. Simple. And again, if you didn't watch part 1, go ahead and please take a look at that. Um, but now what I want to do is, let's go ahead and graph our function here, our network. So we'll label our input and output axis. And let's plot our first values, 2, 4. Let's plot our next values, 3, 6. And we'll plot our third values, set of values, 4, 8. Now, looking at these values, you can see that they pretty much fall on a straight line. So let's go ahead and draw that in here. All right, so now we have our neural network graphed here. And in part one, we trained it using this data set, and it learned a weight of two, okay? And which is perfect, it perfectly fits our data. As you can see by our data set, our input multiplied by two gives us our output. Now that's great, but you might be thinking, well now how do I use this? How is this useful? Well, our neural network has seen the data set we have on the screen here, right? And it's learned a weight of 2, okay? But now let's suppose we have, we want to predict what our sales will be in 2018, okay? Now the year isn't over, right? So it would be valuable to know that ahead of time. Well, let's say last year in 2017, Okay, we had sales of five. So what do you think our neural network would predict? Well, we know our weight is two. So it would take five, multiply by two, and that would give us our output of 10. So now, without it having been trained, remember, it's never seen data for 2017. It's only seen up to 2016. So now, never having seen data for 2017, it's able to use that data to predict future data or future output for 2018 in this example. And in this example, we're using sales, right? Just to give it some context here. So hopefully that explains why those weights are important and how they're used to make predictions. But now let's make our data set a little more complex. So instead of our output simply being double our input, let's make it exponential. Okay, so now our data looks a lot different. So as you can see, we're looking at our first row, 2 times 2 is 4, and moving on to the second row, 3 times 3 is 9, and then finally the third row, 4 times 4 is 16. So now our data is exponentially growing, okay? It's no longer linear. Now let's go ahead and graph these values. So first row, 2, 4, second row, input is 3, output is 9, it's about there, third row, our input is 4, our output is 16, so about there. Now up until now, all we've been doing is simply multiplying by a weight. So that is a linear function. So let's go ahead and try and draw a straight line and fit this data. Now as you can see, this straight line does not accurately fit this data. And I did this to show that if we, if we can only multiply by a weight, the only data we can ever fit is, is, is something that would fall on a straight line. So if your data is nonlinear, right, like, in, like in, our, in our case, our data happens to be exponential, 
a straight line is not going to fit that data, right? So be, just simply being limited to being to multiplying by a weight is not going to be good enough. Now here's where activation functions come into play. Okay, activation functions allow us to fit nonlinear data. So in this case, they allow us to add a curvature to the line, which is exactly what we need to fit this more complex exponential data. And that's really the key takeaway from this video, is that activation functions allow us to fit nonlinear data. And that's really why neural networks and artificial intelligence is so important nowadays and is growing so fast, and it's because they can be mapped to highly complex data and solve highly complex problems. I mean, up until now, I've been showing, we've only been mapping one input to one output. But realistically, in the real world, there could be, there could be hundreds, even thousands of inputs being mapped to an output. So now, let's see how activation functions come into play here. We'll put our neural network back up on the screen here. Now, as we've done in the past, let's feed some data into our network. We'll feed a 3 into our network. We'll multiply by our familiar weight of 2, and that gives us an output of 6. Now, the next step in a neural network would be to pass this 6 to our activation function. And for this example, we'll use what's called the sigmoid activation function. Now, I want to point out here, we're not going to really get into specific types of activation functions because just know that there are many different types, right? In this example, we're going to use sigmoid activation, but there are other types of activation functions called ReLU. There's also a leaky ReLU. Um, so just know that activation functions are kind of plug and play, um, and you kind of just pick whichever one works best uh, given your, situ your specific situation. And so again, we're going to be using the sigmoid activation for this example. Uh, and, you, and, that, and there's the equation, 1 divided by 1 plus the exponent of negative z. Um, now z is the result of multiplying our input times our weight. You will commonly see that result called z. And in this example, it's 6. So we would pass 6, or z, to our sigmoid activation function. And that gives us a final result or output of 0.998. Now, at this point, I want to talk about the neural network a little deeper now. Now, what you've seen here on the screen is three nodes, right? An input node, an arrow connecting it to the next node, right? And then, an, and then you, which is called a hidden node, that's the middle node. And then the last node is our output node. Right, so this is the minimum amount of layers or that you need in a neural network, okay? Because you have to have input, right? Then you have to do something with that input to get your output. So it makes logical sense. But one thing I want to point out here is how neural networks actually work. Okay, I want to get a little bit deeper with that. So the arrows here, and 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 you'll often see this diagram. You probably come across it already in neural net, when learning neural networks. Um, these arrows are called tensors. Okay, and in reality, right now we've only been multiplying by one weight. But in reality, each tensor or arrow would have a weight. Okay, and that's really all I wanted to point out. Um, up until now, I, we, I just did, used one weight just to keep things simple so you understood the concepts. But to cap things off, let's take a look at another example where we employ a weight at each tensor as you would in a normal neural network. So step one, we multiply our input by our weight. Let's use 2 as an example and a weight of 0.5. 2 times 0.5 gives us equals 1. So z would be equal to 1. Step 2. We pass that result, or z, to our activation function. And in this example, we'll stick with the sigmoid activation function. And the result of that function is 0.7. So the activation for our hidden neuron, or our middle neuron, our middle node, is 0.7. Now, our next step would be to take our activation of 0.7 and multiply that by the weight in our next layer. So for this example, let's choose a weight of 0.75. So 0.7 times 0.75 equals 0.5. So now we'll repeat the process and pass that result, or z, 
to our activation function. And that will give us our final output of 0.6. Now that is our prediction. So from part one, the only thing we've really added is an activation function after multiplying by our weight. And we've added a whole nother step of multiplying by our weight and activation function, right? Because each arrow or tensor has its own set of weights. Now, I also want to point out if we were training our network, if we were in the process of training our network as we saw in part one, there would be an additional step here of calculating our loss to see how bad our prediction was. Then we would update our weights and repeat this whole process. Again, we went through that in, video, in part one. Uh, so if you haven't seen that, go check that out. All right, so just to wrap things up, let's review what we learned. Remember, we learned activation functions allow our network to, pit, to fit more complex nonlinear data. We also learned that tensors are what connects each layer, and each tensor contains its own set of weights. We also took a look at step-by-step -step examples showing exactly how data flows through a neural network. So coming up next, we're going to talk about bias, and we'll take a look at how that plays into neural networks. I'm also going to have a video coming up talking about backpropagation and what that is. And lastly, for those of you interested in the code, there will be videos coming up where I, we go through coding a neural network in TensorFlow. So a lot to look forward to. Please don't forget to subscribe, and thanks for watching. All right, so that'll do it. This is a new channel. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, hit the bell, and thanks for watching.